Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about how to ask for what you want in romantic relationships. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm super happy to have you here. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our weekly videos on mental health related topics and helpful coping skills for you to apply in your own everyday lives. My name is Gabriel Arroyo and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist located in Southern California. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about asking for your wants and needs in a romantic relationship. So this is a follow up on our previous video of asking for your wants and needs for better communication. So now we're going to get a little bit more specific on in relationships, romantic relationships. So what I hear a lot when I start uh, either individual therapy, when the client is talking about their significant other or in couples counseling is there's a gap in their wants and needs being met or their partner understanding their wants and needs. And so when I do a little bit of digging and we talk about it a little bit more in, in detail, I'm constantly hearing that there seems to be some misunderstanding or that they don't know how to specify their wants and needs or that their partner is just not getting what they're saying as far as uh, I want X, Y, or Z. So let's go through some few basic steps of how you could clearly articulate your wants and needs and a little bit of training practice to do with your partner uh, just in case that they're, they're not fully understanding. The biggest thing that I, I tell my clients uh, when they're talking about their wants or needs being emotional emotionally related. Uh, so um, a big one out of here is I want my partner to hear me, listen to me, validate how I feel. And I ask them what they mean by that. So what does that look like for you? And sometimes people are pretty insightful with how they describe what they're looking for. And, and sometimes I think that what they're asking for um, is essentially asking for a therapist <laughs> and then I ask him like oh well great is your partner a therapist because you're asking for all these skills and you're asking them to be a therapeutic partner versus your significant other so I want that I want us to have that in mind of having clear expectations of what our wants and needs are from our particular partner and if they have that skill set then great then then yeah that's definitely something we could ask for uh, but my partner uh, could, could not ask for me to do um, mathematic equations or be a statistician it's just not in my wheelhouse it's not gonna happen um, I could balance our checkbooks but that's probably gonna be about it so <laughs> and that's something that we'd have to talk about as far as her expectations of me uh, is that in my wheelhouse so that's the first tip is have your expectations clear of what you're asking and wanting from your partner and, and even if it's not in their wheelhouse there's no harm in asking for it, right? And that's a different type of conversation you could have as a couple of how can I get you what you want and need if I can't provide it. J just like I was saying, if my wife asked me to, to do some mathematic equations, that's just not in my wheelhouse, but I will definitely hire an accountant or somebody that could do it for us. Um, so then her need might be met. So the first thing, expectation. When we're asking for our wants and needs, be very clear about it. Uh, and sometimes this takes a little praise, polish, praise when we are guiding our partner to meet our wants and needs. So the biggest one I hear is communication. Uh, I, I want my partner to hear me, listen to me, talk to me. And once again, it's having that expectation. Are you expecting them to be a therapist, right? Um, because people have their own thoughts and feelings um, same as I do as a therapist when people are talking to me I have my own thoughts perspectives feelings uh, but I'm in a role and it's my job to be where the client is and help them where they are versus interjecting my own thoughts and opinions right so if your partner is not a therapist they might not be prepared to do that so but we could praise, polish, praise with coaching them to better fi uh, fit 
our wants and needs. So if we're wanting more validation, we want somebody to just listen to us, encourage us, uh, that's what we have to be clear on. And we're praising them for when they're doing what we're wanting them to do. And then a little bit of polish, we're like, hey, yeah, you know, that was really great. You listened to me. I, I felt that you were there. Uh, polish, maybe have a little more eye contact with me when we're talking. And then praise. But I, I'm so glad that you are, you're listening. Uh, thank you. I feel connected with you. And now I'm feeling hurt. So praise, polish, praise. Because we're going to get that positive reinforcement to get more of what we want in our relationships. And then once again, being clear. What's our expectation and what is it that we're wanting? And the tip that I would have for working with your partner when you're asking for your wants and needs is people are naturally going to go to their default. So if I'm being stretched to something that's not familiar to me, so for example, uh, the five love languages, if you haven't read the book, I'll drop a link in the description. It's a great book to just better understand yourself and your partner. So for me, mine is acts of service. My partner's is affirmations. So that's not my native love language. So, um, me, I'll, I'll build the house, I'll build anything she wants, um, I'll do ridiculous projects, and that's how I express how I love her. Uh, but that doesn't always fill her emotional need. So when she asks me for her want of, hey, I need some more words of affirmation, that, that's a native language for me. It's not my default. So I'm going to need some coaching. I'm going to need a little bit of assistance in making sure that I stay on top of that. Of course, I'm a therapist so I do know about it and I, I know to say the things and I know what to say and I do have the feelings but it's not native to me so I'm not always going to remember and that's where when we're asking for our wants we have to be very clear about it and we have to coach a little bit. Now here's a pitfall that I, I see with a lot of couples or clients that I see is automatically they start digging their heels in and they're like well I don't want to teach my partner to be able to love me. That's, that's a completely different thing. That's a completely different thing, right? So with the example I provided, it's not my native love language, but if that's my partner's love language, I'm gonna do everything I can to provide that. But once again, it's not native for me, so it's not gonna come out automatically. There is a little bit of a learning curve and some training. So having compassion for your partner and helping them, it's very different from me not being uh, automatic with that love language versus me not wanting to do that. And that would be a separate discussion that we would have to have with our partners if I was just flat out refusing, like, no, words of affirmation is your thing, don't want to do it, I'm going to go build you uh, the backyard. <laughs> so that's a different topic. Um, but once again, if you have any questions about any of these concepts, it's a little bit more of an advanced concept of really asking directly for our wants and needs with our romantic relationships, and then the, the tools, the training, and the constant reinforcement and coaching to get what you ultimately want and need out of your relationship. Comment below with any questions. I'll be happy to answer them and help you out with any scenarios you may have. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our weekly videos on mental health related topics and helpful coping skills for you to apply in your own everyday lives. Thank you.